tonight isn't it hallelujah hallelujah before we get started we're going to ask pastor bill just to pray pastor bill will you pray sir will you pray (laughs) 
Glory be to God. Amen. I don't know about you, but you can be seated right now. I just, I sense his spirit tonight. Uh, and I, I'm just believing tonight. God's, God's got something special. Pastor T's got a word tonight. And tonight, I, I, I want to, I know some of you may have a prayer request, but I, I, I want to pray for Eddie tonight. Uh, Eddie goes tomorrow for upper and a lower GI series. They're going to try to find out exactly what's wrong with him. So uh, he's been in a lot of pain. He's been in a lot of sickness. And I didn't realize it. Eddie didn't have 25 pounds to lose. But they say Eddie has lost about 25 pounds. Uh, so uh, we just want to be lifting him up tonight. Amen. Has anybody else got a prayer request tonight that you need, you need uh, lifting up tonight? Amen. Amen. All right, Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you right now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' holy and precious name. Father, you said we're two or three gathered together in your name. You're right there in the midst. Father, you said we're two come agreeing as touching any one thing in my name. It shall be done. Father, you said if we would abide in you and you were to abide in us and we could ask uh, and it would be granted by the Father. So, Father, we just lift up Eddie to that. Lord, he is our brother in Christ. Uh, and we say that there's an open window in heaven for Eddie and Lord I'm believing that tonight uh, your angels are ascending and descending uh, and Lord they're coming to take away what he don't need and they're bringing what he needs uh, I'm saying that heaven's best uh, is being opened up to him tonight uh, and there's an anointing uh, a super anointing uh, not, not, an not an ordinary anointing uh, but a supernatural anointing of healing uh, virtues that are flowing uh, through his body I'm believing right now Lord but, uh, I know he's fixing to be examined uh, by an upper and a lower GI, but I know, praise God, uh, when you get through checking him out, uh, it's going to be something supernatural, and the mighty hand uh, of God is going to touch his life. Uh, it's going to do a lot more uh, than what the physicians and the surgeons uh, can do. So I thank you tonight, Lord, uh, for a man of God uh, that stands upon the word, a faithful member of this body that loves you, Lord. Uh, and Lord, I thank you, Lord. Uh, that tonight uh, is the night. Uh, I sense your spirit uh, is moving in a mighty way tonight, Lord. Uh, and I thank you, Lord. Uh, there may be some sitting in this audience tonight, Lord. Uh, needs a touch from you. Needs a healing in their body. Needs deliverance. Uh, needs to be set free. So, Lord, I'm believing right now. You're making yourself available to them. Uh, all they got to do is uh, reach out and faith uh, and touch your Lord. Uh, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Oh, I thank you tonight. Uh, Lord, you got guardian angels uh, all over the place. Uh, Lord, I'm believing that. Uh, that's it, Lord. Uh, let the angels uh, begin to minister to them. Uh, begin to let them know, hallelujah, that they're not in this thing. Uh, by themselves, uh, but there's something supernatural that is right there with them. Uh, you got your arms around them right now. Lord, they can feel the nearness. Uh, they can feel the presence. Uh, they can know that that the anointed one uh, is here tonight. Uh, and Father, I'm believing uh, tonight uh, is a night to surrender. Tonight uh, is a night to cast all of your cares uh, upon him uh, for he careth for you. I thank you tonight, Lord. I feel that ghost spirit uh, in the house of the Lord tonight. So Father, I give you the praise uh, and the honor and the glory. And we're not going to leave here like we came, uh, but we're going to leave this place uh, energized by your spirit tonight. Uh, not the same, uh, but in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Anybody need jump starting tonight? <laughs> oh man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we thank God for the we thank God for tonight. We thank God for the wonderful praise and worship. Not wonderful, but anointed praise and worship. Wonderful and anointed praise and worship. And we thank God for the prayers that come forth. Listen here, if you, if uh, you shouldn't be sad now, shouldn't be a yoke on you. Hallelujah, uh, <laughs> the yoke should be destroyed because of the anointing. Y'all doing all right tonight? All right, we're gonna have some fun tonight. 
Um, we thank God for the opportunity to be up here in front of you, and we thank God for uh, partner. I won't say partner in crime, but I just say <laughs> partner, uh, Pastor Bill up here, and, and, and always with us as well. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. We're just going to have some fun tonight and just get in the word and just talk about some things. We got the mic right there for Pastor Bill and just wanting him to, to input um, um, what he sees and what he knows um, about what we're talking about tonight. And uh, let's just have some fun. Is that all right? All right to have some fun? All right. All right. Well, first of all, what we're going to talk about tonight is, is um, a lot of different things, uh, but we mainly want to talk about um, uh, the church, this church specifically, the need for it, um, how it, um, how it envelops everything. Um, a lot of times when it comes to, um, come to understanding the Bible and understanding, uh, quote unquote church or the church, there's a lot of things in Christendom that's kind of fragmented all around. We understand some pockets of things, but nothing is really connected together. And a lot of times when things are not, are not connected together, then it's hard to get an understanding of who we are and what God is doing, how everything connects. Because when it comes down to God or, or the things of God, God is very smart. He's the smartest person beyond this planet, on the planet and beyond that. And we just want to get some understanding tonight or just talk about, just talk about tonight um, how everything is put into place. Okay. All right. Uh, first of all, we want to talk about who we are. Okay, it's good to start right there. Um, thinking about that at, 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 at um, even at uh, when I had some time, some free time today, this thought came to me, and um, and so I'm going to share it with you. Um, the sequoia tree. Anybody know what a sequoia tree is? I know my yeah, mom know what a sequoia tree is. Uh, Mr. Roy does. Well, basically, a sequoia tree, and I wrote it down. Um, uh, uh, Prophetess Linda would appreciate this. Um, it's on the West Coast. It's a coast redwood. It's a redwood tree. Those big old trees, huge trees that are that are um, just enormous. That people actually drive their cars through. A sequoia tree. Um, it's one of the largest species of trees on the planet on, on Earth. Um, it may contain enough wood um, to make a five room home. A five room home forty times. All right, a five-room home, forty times just for one tree. Um, also, it can weigh up to about four thousand pounds. Um, it is as tall as the Statue of Liberty. And if we took a string that is around about nine, uh, ninety-five uh, feet worth of string, and if we connect the the end of it to the beginning of it, that would be about the width or the roundness um, of the tree. Um, the reason why I said all this is because even though that tree is that large, um, its seed is the size of a tomato seed. Okay? So just think about a tomato seed can turn into a tree that large. The reason why I said this is because there's a scripture in the Bible that's similar to this. It's in Matthew, the 13th chapter. It's in verse 31 through 32 where Jesus is talking about the fig tree how the fig tree is. I believe Jesus used the fig tree, because, uh, uh, um, not the fig tree, but the mustard seed. I'm sorry, I'm thinking figs, but the mustard seed and how powerful it is. It talks about the size of the seed, but the potential that the seed has inside that small seed is great potential. Well, it's the same thing when it comes down to us. We may be an individual, uh, just, uh, just uh, what we call a regular hum human being, but on the inside of us is tremendous potential, okay? And that's what we're about to, to delve into. Let's turn to first, um, second Corinthians, 2 Corinthians um, chapter 5 and verse 21. And we're just going to talk about some things and then connect the dots as so to speak. Second Corinthians chapter five, and we're going to look at verses. We look at verse um, twenty and twenty-one. Uh, we're going to start off by talking about who you are. Okay, who are you? And the Bible lets us know who we are. A lot of times in our in this day and age, people want to define us by how old we are, by the color of our skin by economic background, by our past, 
they want to base us and define us by this. But God, who made us, understands our true potential, and he knows who we are. So he tells us who we are. I think I'll take what he says um, over what everybody else says. Can you agree with that? Oh, well, hallelujah. Let's get in it. All right. Second Corinthians um, 5 and 20. It says, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. He hath made, he hath made him, Jesus, uh, to be sin who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So who are you? You are an ambassador of God. You're a representative, a representative of God. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. If you are born again, the, then you are righteous. Now, are you righteous by what you did? Everybody knows this. No, you're not. You're not righteous based on what you've done, but you're righteous based on what God has done for you. So you can boldly say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now, what religion wants to say is that you have, you have fallen or you have failed and bumped your head because that's not true. Who declares you righteous? What makes you righteous? Well, what makes me righteous is Jesus Christ. His death, burial, and resurrection, that made me righteous. It says right then, he have made Jesus to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So we are the righteousness of God. We are an ambassador for Christ. Let's look at Ephesians. We're going to be all in the book of Ephesians tonight. Is that all right? Oh, goodness. Ephesians. Let's look at um, chapter 1. And we're going to go through this kind of fast to get to the meat of what's going on. Ephesians chap chapter 1. We're going to look at verse 4. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. All right, so he, we are chosen, all right? Who are you? I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, that's one. I'm an ambassador of God, that's two. I'm chosen, all right? All right, let's look at verse five. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of the children of, by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. So we are adopted. A lot of people look at adoption as a bad thing because they look at the rejection part of adoption. But adoption means that you've been chosen with love. See, for somebody to adopt you, that means they did that on purpose just because they wanted to. You had nothing to do with it. They chose you because they wanted to. They understand what they're getting into. They said, I'll gladly do it. So we've been chosen in God and love. All right, say I'm chosen. Uh, say I'm righteous. Say I'm an ambassador. Say I'm adopted. All right, let's look at verse 6. Say, I'm accepted. I'm accepted. To the praise and of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. We got a couple more. Let's might as well go through it. Um, let's look at Ephesians, same, cha um, same chapter, but let's look at um, verse 23. No, let's look at verse 22. And have put all things under his feet, Jesus' feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Who is the church? Are we here? Who is the church? All right, we are the body of Christ, uh, which is his body, the fullness of him, which filleth all in all. So now, after hearing all this, all the things of who we are, then we should have an understanding a little bit and an appreciation of the lens that God has went through to get us here. For you to be born again right now, God had to go through great lengths to get this thing done. Since the fall of Adam, since all the things that have, that have transpired in times past to this point now, God has gone through great lengths to get you at this point in your life. But also God has gone through even more lengths to establish you and has a plan for you. I think the problem a lot of time in Christendom is that we don't really understand who we are. And when we don't understand who we are, then we don't appreciate the great lengths that God has gone through to get us where we are. And if we don't understand the lens that God has established or God has done to get us where we are, then we have no clue as to understanding the direction that God has us in. So in Christendom, there's, a, there's pockets of understanding, but there's not a flow, there's not a continuum that tells a person, all right, this is who you are and this is what I want you to be. But God has a plan from A to Z. 
I said God has a plan from A to Z to get a person born again and helping them understand who they are in Christ Jesus and get them to the point that they can develop and be everything that the Bible says they could be because it's frustrating to hear all these things of who we are but then we're looking at ourselves and say I ain't a bit close to that as a man in the moon I mean, I mean, don't play with me now. I'll I, I, I get my high-pitched voice tonight. Don't, don't mess with me. When it comes down to understanding who we are, God has a plan for us. And he wants us to know from A to Z. And this is getting to connecting to the point what Prophet Linda was talking about yesterday and what an apostle talks about. Christendom has not established a plan, has not established a direction or a structure that we can go by to establish us on purpose just because we want to. We get saved and we're climbing the rough side of the mountain. What the world is that? We get saved and then people want us to just, uh, we go into church and the only thing that people want us to do is to just um, um, go to heaven. And we're broke, busted, and disgusted, full of sickness and disease here. That ha but God has established a plan to get us from point A to point B and that's what we're talking about uh, tonight. Let's go to, well, we're in Ephesians. Let's go to uh, Ephesians chapter 4. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ephesians chapter 4. In Ephesians chapter 4, we're looking at the structure. We're looking at the structure that God has established to get us from point A to point B. All right, remember that now. That's what we're talking about. Who we are and the plan that God has for us. We're born again, but what do we do now? I want to grow, but how do I grow? I want to get to the point that God wants me, wants me to be, uh, but how do I get there? How do I understand all these things? How can I take the word off the page? How can I say I love Jesus and God doing this to, to, to my family, to my children, and they're looking at me and ain't nothing happening. I'm looking at me and nothing's happening. What, how can I have a, an established structure? I thank God, I'm going to interject this. I thank God for what Apostle David is doing now because he's given us an understanding of the purpose of the church and how it all connects, okay? Because that's what we're missing, how it all connects. Because we're saying, all right, I understand this part of the Bible, I understand this, I'm trying to understand that, but nothing's connected. How do we all get together? How do, I, how do we all get everything to the point that we know what we're doing, we know where we're going, and we're moving forward, and things is multiplying, and, 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 and things are coming and evolving and unlocking in my life, but it's, it's doing the same thing for everybody else around me that's a light believer. And not just for them, and not just for me, but everybody who doesn't know God sees that on the inside of us, and we're moving forward forward we are a glorious church how do we get there all right this is how we get there let's look at um, Ephesians the fourth chapter let's look at uh, verse number eight wherefore he saith when when uh, he ascended up on high he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men that's Jesus I, I started right here because the apostle always says when when doing then, that's when he established um, the ascension gifts. That's when, when he ascended up on high. That's when he um, um, led kept captivity captive. And that's when he gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, that is to be, but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that ascended is the same also that ascended far above all heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ." Now, back to this, this seed. God wants us to grow to the point that we feel the measure and the stature of who we are. That redwood tree that's over 4,000 pounds is the same size as a seed, as a tomato seed. Inside of that seed is that 4,000 pound tree. Inside that seed, there is that width of a tree that's 95 feet in, 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 as far as being around. 
In that seed is all that. But until that seed grows, it will never magnify and be that. So when we're born again, we have all of this on the inside of us. But how are we going to grow to get to that size to cause that type of impact? See, that's what we need to know. We need to understand that it, who we are, who we are. We are, we are the anointed church. We are who God says we are. But how can I get it off the page? How can I let it materialize in my life that I'm not just blowing smoke or whistling, whistling Dixie? That is, that is evolving, unlocking, and producing in my life. This is how it happens. He's provided a structure that will help a newborn believer get from A to Z. On purpose, just because they want to. Which is the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. So many times, so many times, the body of Christ suffers and struggles. It's because we don't understand this revelation. And those who have that revelation can't get a whole bunch of people together to establish that revelation. How many pastors, I'm looking at, I might as well look at the camera, I'm feeling, feel, feeling pretty frisky tonight. If you're a pastor or you're an evangelist or you're somebody and you have a bunch of people following you, but you don't know where you're going, you have no direction, you're not, you're not, you're not going to do it, you don't know as far as the structure of the kingdom of God and how things can be established, you don't know mortification, you're not even praying in tongues, folks not even filled with the Holy Ghost, and you're reading the Bible, and it's not materializing, that means you need to sit under somebody who does know. See, that's scriptural in the Bible, that if you don't know, you better, if you don't know, you better ask somebody. That's what the Bible said. If you want some proof, let's go to Acts. Y'all messing up my notes, mine as well. Let's look at Acts chapter 10. Read all of chapter 10. We're not going to read all of chapter 10, but just read all of chapter 10. In Acts, there was certain uh, man of uh, Acts chapter 10, verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian Band. Now that's, that sounds like a good clique right there, the Italian Band. All right, a devout man and one that feared God and with all his house, which he gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming um, into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. Um, and when he had looked, looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And he said, thy prayers. So this man had been praying. If you're a pastor and, and you're leaving people, but you don't know where you're going, we need to pray, don't we? Amen. We need to pray. We need to pray. Pray. And thine arms are, are, are come up, and he, that means he's a giver, come up for a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. Now right there, right there, he didn't know what he needed to know. They weren't filled with the Holy Ghost. They, 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 they were, they, um, they were since, since they were not Jews, they were not a part of, of the Jews and did not hear the message of Holy Ghost. But he prayed. He prayed to the point that, that God said, listen here, your prayers and your alms have been answered. I think a lot of times in Christendom, we don't have enough people that's praying. Because if you're praying with a sincere heart, God's going to tell you, listen, man, you don't know what you're doing. You need to go down with bro down the road. Y'all don't hear me. How can we have churches on every corner? Somebody got to be right. But if somebody's got to be right, somebody got to be wrong. Somebody must not know something. You know, if you, if you if, might as well, let's, let's talk, let's, let's say something where we're in Georgia. If, if you're raising, if you're raising, let's say, if you're raising dogs and you don't know how to raise dogs, but your neighbor know how to raise dogs, what you need to do? You need to get with your neighbor. Your neighbor show you how to raise some dogs. If you don't know how to work on a car, but your neighbor knows how to work on a car, what you need to do? Drive down the road till it break up until the head is busted, and then you gotta pay for a new car? No, you need to ask somebody. You need to ask somebody. Am I talking plain or not? All right then. So now he's praying to God. Cornelius is praying to God, and God sent an angel, and the angel said, "Listen, send for Peter." 
Now, this same chapter is when Peter was on the roof and he was and he, and he, and he got in the trance. And then God laid out these things from him and said, you know, you need to eat. He said, well, I don't eat anything that's, uh, that's, um, that's, um, that's, that's, that's uncommon. He said, well, don't call the thing that I call uh, um, common, um, common. All right? I mean, don't call the things that I call um, unholy, you know, uh, I call holy unholy, basically. And so if you will look into the, uh, in Acts, still in chapter 10, let's look at, uh, Chapter 32. No, no, 31. And said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine arms are and had in, re in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa and call hither Simon, he just rehearsed it, whose name is Peter. He lodged and he is lodged in the house of one Simon, a, t a tanner by the seaside, who when he cometh shall speak unto thee. Immediately therefore I sent to thee. And that's what he's rehearsing to Peter. And thou hast well done that thou art come. Now, therefore, we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. And Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respect of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted of him. The word which God sent uh, unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. And that word I say, ye you know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism was John has preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went forth doing good and healing all manner and all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. All right, now let's keep looking. Let's keep looking. Let's go down to verse 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, uh, can any man for, uh, forbid water that they that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? I said all that and read all that to say this. If you and understand that he did not know what to do, but he prayed to God and God answered. What the church is lacking and what we are lacking a lot of times is just being humble enough to ask somebody, I don't know. That's why we got churches here, churches there, churches there, taking fragments and pieces of the Bible and not connecting it together. If you notice in Ephesians, he said, for the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher, for the, for the, um, for the, for the development, for the saints, for the work of the ministry. He has a structure in place that if we go through that structure, we will develop. I said, if we go through that structure, we will develop. And so many times in the church, instead of having, you having a congregation of 10 people and you don't know where you go. I don't know why I'm on this, but this has been in my spirit all day. I wish I was talking to you. I feel like I'm talking to somebody in that camera right now because I'm telling you, a lot of times pastors have their people suffering, suffering, going through things and they don't know what to do. Why they should go to somebody who does know what to do. If you don't know how to establish somebody for the work of the ministry, go to somebody who does. It's too much pride in the body to the point that we can't get together and just, buy, and just sit down and learn from somebody. How hard is it for a man of God to take his whole congregation, congregation of about 35 people, and say, listen, we're going to shut down every Sunday morning. We're going to shut down every Sunday morning. We're going to learn. And then guess what? Sunday night, we'll have service. Thursday, we'll have service. Tuesday, we'll have service. But when it comes down to Sunday morning, we're going somewhere so we can learn. Somewhere we can learn and somewhere we can grow. I, that's, that's, and, and I'm saying that to say this. It's because if we have all these things on the inside of us, but nothing is unlocking, nothing is changing, nothing is developing, it's because there's not a structure that we should go by. Because if God does it, it's going to be a plan A, B, C, or step A, B, C, D, E, F, down the road to the point that we will develop and be what God wants us to be. If we're not on that path, we're going to have, we're going to have problems. We're going to have problems. I'm not saying that the path is going to be easy, but we're going to have problems. And that's what Christendom is facing. 
So what does that mean to you? I'll tell you exactly what it means to you. It means you need to come to church. <laughs> come to church and learn what this structure is. Come to church and understand what is the purpose of an apostle. I mean, what's the whole purpose of it? I'll tell you what the purpose is. Let's go. Let's go. Let's look at, I got to go back on my notes because I'm going everywhere. Let's look at, uh, uh, let's look at first, first Corinthians, these, the, uh, first Corinthians chapter two, maybe that will help us. Yeah. And while you have first Corinthians chapter two. Let's look at it. First Corinthians chapter two. All right. We're talking about a structure. I think I put um, the reason why I put this down. Let me let me read it real quick. First Corinthians chapter two, which was which none of the princes of this world knew, and we're talking about uh, we're talking about Satan and and, and the people in general. Uh, For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor have heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit, which such of all things, yea, even the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of God, save a man, save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so the things of God uh, knoweth no man but the spirit of God. I, I guess I'm kind of getting myself kind of uh, ahead of myself, but I guess I can use the scripture for this. But yes, I'm going to use the scripture to say this. The structure that I was talking about as far as we need to go through, uh, that is the structure that Satan is so hard uh, is coming against. When I'm talking about understanding the role of an apostle, that's what Satan is coming against. You, uh, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teachers, that's what Satan is coming against. Pastors coming underneath an apostle, that's what Satan is coming against. Um, evangelists working with um, prophets, that's what Satan is coming against. Why is that? Because that is a structure that God has established. But if we never get unified, we're never growing. Can I say that? If, if, if we're never unified, then we're never growing. If we're never growing, then there's never a model. And if there's never a model, there's never an example. And if there's never an example, then what is the pattern that we're going to go by to grow? See, we all scattered like sheep everywhere. And we're not growing. We're scattered like sheep everywhere, and we're not coming together. We're scattered like sheep everywhere, and, and we're not coming together and growing. I'm talking about universally as a church. Why am I saying that to you? Because it's important for you to know. It's important for you to know the whole plan of God, because God got a plan for you, but your plan is in, intermingled and mixed in with everybody else, because that's what the key is. The key is unity. It's not about you just growing in your four no more, but it's about us growing together and understanding where we're going. Where we're going is that we're supposed to be establishing a, a, a church to the point that we don't need what the government has. We dictate what, what goes on. We dictate what runs in our neighborhood. We dictate what laws are going to be established. Why is that? We dictate the resources that we can have people. Pastor Bill and Miss Gale stayed uh, overnight um, uh, for, for the shelter. Why is that? Because to give people who had, if the lights went off, they had a place to go. Roar was there. If, they had, if the lights cut off, they have a place to have a warm meal. See, that's what we need. We need an example for people if they're struggling with their finances, somebody to teach them finances. Somebody to establish them how, how to, to get a business running. How to, how, to, how to have a livelihood. You know, how to get past your past. See, all these things, because we're thinking that when God moves, it's just going to be a tremendous thing, and we're just going to close our eyes and then, and then open up our eyes, and everything's going to be right. No, it's not. See, we're looking for the miraculous instead of the supernatural. See, we just want the lights to flicker, and then next minute, we got gold watches. No, we got to run. We, 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 the lights flicker, and we all got Bugattis out there. I don't know if y'all know what a Bugatti is. It's a nice car. All right. <laughs> But, 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 but what God is wanting, he wants us to walk by faith. And that faith is going to establish us into a lifestyle of developing people. 
But how can we develop people if we can't get along with people, we don't understand each other, and we won't come together? In order for us to grow and grow and grow and grow and, 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 and work together, somebody has to lead. <laughs> if we're going to go somewhere, somebody has to lead. Somebody has to be a set person in place that we all listen to, that we all trust, that we all have a respect for, and that we can work together with. And that's the problem when it comes down to the, apost- um, the, uh, the apostolic move that we have, when it comes to the, great, uh, to the hub and to the, and, to the, and to the building stage. All these things work together for this. It's time for us to come together and, and be what God has called us to be. How is that going to be established? It's going to be established by us, first of all, listening, learning, understanding, and then communicating that to everybody else. If you know a pastor got about 15 folks and don't know what to do, say, listen, bro, why don't you... I don't know why this on me. I, I wish I was talking to you about I see like I'm talking to that camera. Why don't you come and listen and learn? I know, I know you're here and everybody here because their grandmama be here and their great grandmama be here and nobody want to go to the church because if they go to, the, to, to another church because if they go to the family reunion, they're going to get talked about. You know, it, but the thing is, if, if people are struggling, why don't you come here and learn? Why don't you come here and develop yourself? I think we need to go and tell people, young, young people, old people, ministers, and everybody that's hungry for God, why don't you come here? Why don't you come and learn and grow? Because, because once we learn and grow and understand, because listen here, the reason why I say this, I don't know too many places where the black and white and Hispanic are together in, the, in this area. See, that's why I'm saying this. You know, there's some places, uh, me and my friend was talking, talking not too long ago, but not too far from here, in, in the books, in the county books, you can sell, you can, um, back what, in the 18th, you can sell, you can sell, uh, you can sell, um, sell me for $100. <laughs> you can sell me for $100. A mule costs 600 Do you hear me? I said a mule costs 600 but in the books, I would cost $100. But see, in this church, we don't look at color. In this church, we look at a man's character. We look at a man's heart. That's what we look at. Well, don't you think that needs to go out? <laughs> you know, don't you think the person who thinks like we think need to have some money in their pocket? Because you can say what you want, but if you don't have the money to back it up, man, <laughs> say what you want to. I got this money. I think what I want. But if you could see somebody with money, somebody with a stat, with, with, with credibility in the community making change, making decisions, making moves because they got the heart of God in them. See, that's what we're doing. That's what we're establishing. A kingdom culture that a lot of places around here don't have. You go to some, you go to some, that's some neighborhoods right now that if Pastor Bill would go in it, they would hate him. Don't know the man heart. Don't know he'll, he'll run himself ragged. Don't know that. Don't know he'll give you the shirt off his back. Only thing they see is his color. You see what I'm saying? It has to change. But what else has to change is our mindset about us ourselves. Our mindset about each other. Our mindset about money. Our mindset about establishing businesses. So all this needs to change. How, this, how is it going to change? It's going to come by us unifying. Us coming together. Because I'm telling you, this is the very thing that Satan is encamping upon. Let's, let's look at this. I'm going to see if I can find these scriptures. Because I have them in my book, but I'm so wide up, I can't see nothing. You hear me? I can't see a thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory. Well, let's look at Ephesians 4 because it, it, has, it has what we're talking about. Right. And if we look at um, um, Ephesians 4, let's look at chap- um, chapter 4 still. And we're going to look at verse 13 again. And it says, till we all come in the unity of, of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto a measure of the stature of the fullness of God. That means we're going to grow like that, like that, um, red, um, that redwood tree. We're going to grow to the point that we, can, that we can be like a big tree. Amen. We can grow and make a difference. That we henceforth be not too, be, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men, by the cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. 
People are, and, and the reason why men are doing this is because Satan is, is, on, is on the cusp of it. He does not want us to understand who we are. He does not want us to get into a structure that there's a, there's a, there's a process from A to Z that you can grow and establish yourself. He does not want that. I said he does not want that. Because if you can get on the fast track from growing from A to Z and doing everything God wants you to do in unity with other people, then what? he's lost the battle. Because it says right here in, in, in Ephesians that if we grow, we'll grow to the full measure and the stature of what we're supposed to be and Satan can't handle us. So what does he want to do? He wants to keep us ignorant. He wants to put in doctrine that causes division. He, he wants to get, he wants us to, 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 um, to focus on the little things like what color you are and where your background is. And, and, should, and, should, and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and I don't believe in being filled with the Holy Ghost. And I don't believe in speaking with tongues. Well, don't read the New Testament. Because the test, read the New Testament is full with, full of it. He doesn't want us to have that. Why? Because once you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you have truth. The one that gives you truth, you have him on the inside. And now you just ain't going to listen to everybody every Tom, Dick, and Harry. Because when Tom, Dick, and Harry says something, and you feel with the Holy Ghost, something on the inside will say, something wrong about that. He doesn't want you to have that. So he's on the cusp. He's hanging out right here with this unity thing. That's why we're always segregated on Sunday mornings. That's why we're always segregated. We tolerate each other at work. Oh, you don't hear me. We tolerate each other. And I ain't just talking about white, but I'm talking about black on black. I'm talking about light skinned black and dark skinned black. Huh? I'm talking about blonde head and brunette head. We do the silliest, stupidest stuff. But he's encamped about that unity. He doesn't want us to grow. How does he keep us from growing? By not acknowledging that, hey, that we need to have an apostle. We need to have a prophet. We need to have an evangelist. We need to have a, a, a pastor and a teacher for the perfecting of the saints. So he's saying, I've established these people to establish you. Well, if you don't have these people, how are you going to be established? He wrote, he wrote the Bible. I didn't write the Bible. He said, these, these five fold ministries, these people are here to establish you. And if we discredit one of them, we're not growing like we should. It's very important that we embrace and appreciate. Pastor, we can jump in any time. I'm just going. Just going. Uh, um, but we, it's, it's, a pre, it's, it's, it's important that we appreciate what we have here. And that we grow. That every time, every Sunday, now I'm talking, now I'm talking to us, okay. Every Sunday morning, every, 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 every Sunday night, every Wednesday, every Friday, or on your podcast, that you listen. That you listen. And that you what? You go back and you listen again. And then what you do after that? You go back and you listen again. Because what's coming out of their mouths is establishing you to be everything it's that, it's that platform that God has put into place for us to grow from A to Z. Now, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Pastor B, you answer for me. My wife can answer. How we learn about salvation here? Talk to me. Somebody talk to me. How we learn about being filled with Holy Ghost here? Well, we done wiped out about 75% of, of every church that's around here. It's a shame. How we learned about mortification. Yes. That means dying. That means that, means that, that, we, give, uh, that, that, um, that we give God more of us. Because when we walk in, because we go through mortification, what is mortification? It's the death process. What is that death process? Well, I'm still cussing folks out and I'm still drinking a little bit and I'm just doing everything, but I'm continuing to pray in tongues. What you pray in tongues that you drank too? Yeah, you pray in tongues you drank too. What is that? Because Holy Ghost is working with you to change those things. You can't change it with willpower. Oh, I'm preaching now. You can't change it with willpower. You can't change it just because you say, well, I'm going to flip the switch. No, because every time you try to, you go back to doing the same thing. But the Holy Ghost will do something on the inside of you that will cause permanent change. And when that permanent change gets on, deals with you dealing with things on the outside, I'm talking about uh, droll, loud, whatever you want to call it, uh, uh, weed, alcohol, everything. And then it goes into more deeper things. Y'all thought that was a deep thing. There ain't nothing. I see it's on the I'm talking about deeper things like hate and, and spirit of division and, and self-exaltation. Then it gets down deep into those things. 
when it gets down deeper into those things, then what happens? Those things begin to leave your life and you begin to walk in everything God wants you to be. Because right. when you're not controlled by fear and when you're not controlled by hate and when you're not controlled by what people say, guess what? You think clearly. Right. And the obstacles in your life that look big at the time, they look big because you were afraid of them. Right. But when that fear gets out the way, it's not, it's, it, it does, it's not, it's not fear anymore. It's an opportunity. And when you see things as an opportunity, then faith is developed. And then, then when you see that, and then when you go by faith, then the mountain has to remove. And see, and then when the mountain's removed, even though you have all these things, then you'll grab somebody else. And that person, you, you, your life is not just to establish yourself, but it's, your life is there to establish somebody else. And fun and support are calls to change people. So it's not you yourself changing, but it's a whole neighborhood change, a whole family, then a whole neighborhood, then a whole city. You know, think of, the, think of the crime rate when people walking in love. Think about that. Amen. I'm preaching now. I'm preaching better than that light is shining. I don't care. Because one of them out. Hallelujah. Think about that. Think about people that can minister to somebody because we've been butchered in the times past. Think about the times that we've been hurt, abused. Um, um, have everybody been talked down when you were little? When you are little, me and my wife talked about this in times past, how people just, you know, how people just cuss their child. Just cuss right, right, right. You know, just cuss People, oh, yeah, folks, fo fo cuss the child. Yes. How you have to grow in that? But just think, you can go to a people that it doesn't affect you anymore, that can help you walk through that. Yes. Huh? What about these diseases that's killing everybody? Huh? Man, 10 years ago, man, 20, 10 years ago, you may hear some folk with some type of cancer, but you don't see everybody, you know, just everywhere. Or go to a place that that's healing. Hmm? See, this is, this is what God is establishing. But we have to go through the process. And it gets back to us now. Now we're going to have to go through that process. We have to be willing to go through the process so God can get us from A to Z. But when we go through that process, we're going to come out a whole lot better. We're going to come a whole lot stronger. Listen here, people, you ain't by yourself when it comes to your issues. You're not by yourself when it comes down to hurt and pain. You're not by yourself when you can look and say, man, this world seems like it has gone crazy. Huh? You're not by yourself when you look at your pocket and say, my God, what's happening? You're not, you're not by yourself when you say, man, my disease seems like it's taking my family out. You're not by yourself when you say, is people loving anybody anymore? Everybody hates each other. It's going to take a people that's going to go by a structure that's going to listen to somebody who has lived it and, 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 get, and got the scars to prove it and says you can make it. But see, this is the choice that we all have to make as an individual. Are you willing to go through the process? Are you willing to listen to an apostle? Are you willing to listen to work with an evangelist? A pastor and a teacher. Are you willing to stay and work through when they say, listen here, they said, you need to clean up. <laughs> oh, God. That's, oh, I'm sorry. That's, that, that's, uh, that's old time church folk. They just, the, the old mother look at you about, old mother look at you. I mean, she just, she's just like, she ain't even looking at you. She just look at you one time and you need to clean up. How you know I need to clean up? I did need to clean up. <laughs> I need to clean up. But to clean up some things in our life. You need somebody to come in your life and say, listen here, have you been praying with the Holy Ghost? Have you been praying? You haven't been? I need for you to pray now. I want you to pray. See, it, you're going to have to come under somebody. See, it's saying that, that, that these people will, will, will perfect the saints, but the saints have to want to be perfected. When you go to church, you just come to listen. Say, listen here, I'm here. They better not say nothing to me. I'm here, and I'm going to listen to what they say, and I'm getting up out of here. I got my, my show on when I get to the house. I need to get me some, I need to go by Dairy Queen and get me a, a what, what, what my favorite, what, brownie, but a candy shop. There you go, Casey. I need to get me a candy shop blizzard, and I'm about to go to the house, and I bet I hear nothing. They better not call me for nothing either. <laughs> See, if, if, that, if that's your attitude, even though you're here, you're not being perfected. We're going to have to be perfected. We're going to have to on purpose go. Even if we don't want to go, we're going to have to go because we believe our faith tells us if we keep going with this structure, we're going to be perfected. Pastor Bill, you got, you got anything in you? Go ahead. You, you're going, you're on a roll now, brother. 
I'm trying to find this scripture. That's why I want you to talk, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm playing. I, I don't, you said if you ain't seen a pastor or oh, minister mess up before you on the on the on the TV, they playing. You hear me? They play everybody mess up. They just don't tell you. But I'm bold enough to tell you. I'm trying to find this scripture. Pastor Bill, try to get something like that. Amen. Praise God. What he's trying to say is that we've got to get focused uh, and get focused on the kingdom and get the focus off of ourselves because when we're focused on ourselves, uh, all we want to do is come in here on Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday and just feel good and make, you know, what was it? I heard uh, whining to bind them. I think it was. She said, some reason folks just come to church and try to get rich off of each other. See? They always got something to sell each other. They all got something to try to pull and, and draw from each other instead of drawing from God and getting on fire. Because, see, this is kingdom business. When he blessed them after he formed man, he said, go and multiply. Take dominion. Hey, this is kingdom business that he's talking about. We're, that's the reason we're out here on the weekends knocking on doors. That's the reason we're in nursing homes. That's the reason we're in the hospital. That's the reason we're on the phone. We got we know that the folks out there are lost and dying and going to hell. And so we've got to get fo focused on the word of God, focused on the Savior, Jesus Christ, and him crucified. I like what Paul said. Paul said, I care to know nothing among you except Jesus and him crucified. Praise God, it's all about the kingdom of God, and this church is on the go. And I'm believing that, praise God, it's beginning to get contagious because as we keep going, some of you get excited and want to come alongside of us and say, I want to get out there with you. I want to be out there in the highways and the byways and the hedges. See, you got to do something for God to bless you. And Pastor Bill, let me just cut, cut in re real quick. Re you better go be for it. Yeah, before, 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 the bus, before the bus people leave, I found it. I found it. Glory say he found it. I found it. All right, second um, um, Ephesians chapter two. It was in Ephesians. I said we we're gonna be in the book of Ephesians all night. Verse nineteen. Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ Himself being the chief cornerstone. Listen here, and it says, "In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built it together for a habitation of God through the Spirit." A habitation of God, meaning that when we come together under that foundation of Jesus. Christ led by apostles and the prophets then that's how we can build a habitation that God can come in I didn't say that that, that the religion can come in I didn't say that everybody would think it's public that God can come in right. see we need a church that God's in not with everybody want a church full of people we want a church full of God right. because when you have God then people get changed people come automatically if you're going to tell me that somebody got healed over here guess where I'm going I'm taking my folk I'm taking my mama I'm taking my big mama I'm taking my aunt I'm taking everybody where that church is at that's getting folks healed and getting folks delivered Give me the last one, last one, real quick. Don't shout, leave bus people. Don't just give me one second. Um, 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 Ephesians, let's look at four, 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 Ephesians 4 again. And it's 16. Remember, all this is in Ephesians. So read the book of Ephesians about five times uh, in the next two weeks and see how it, and see, and see one, you'll see, see more. Let's look at 16. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by the, which every joint supplieth according to the factual working in the measure. Remember, the, remember that measure. We're growing to that measure. Um, of every part make an increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Listen here. There is a structure that Jesus Christ himself founded. Founded upon with the apostles and the prophets. That is the structure. If we have that structure and we go with that structure, we'll develop. Y'all bust people. I know y'all have to leave. So I, I have that out there. But if we go by that structure, then we grow in unity. And in love to the point that we can develop and change our lives, our family's lives, our neighbor's lives, our community's lives, our, our, our state's lives, our nation's lives. We can do it. But you're going to have to will, be willing to go through the process and believe this is the plan that God has. It's the only plan that God has in the New Testament. We're supposed to be a New Testament church. So where do you find the New Testament church directions at? In the New Testament. The New Testament has it down. We should follow that New Testament and flourish. All right, that's all I got. Amen. Praise God, I love you. Lord, I hope I didn't confuse God. you. I had a wonderful time. I, 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 I hope, I hope Prophet, Prophet doesn't let me do it some more. Amen. Yes, Praise God. We can't leave without praying for the lady, the first lady of the house. Uh, amen. I want you to rise to your feet. I, I should have done this earlier, and I didn't. 
Apostle David called uh, just before service, and Sister Geraldine is not feeling good at all. And he's right there with her right now. So praise God. I want us to touch the throne room tonight. Saints, I want you praying and believing. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you right now. Lord, giving you the praise and the honor and the glory. Hearing your word tonight uh, and standing on the word uh, because you said by your stripes that Sister Geraldine was the healed of Christ. Uh, and I'm believing tonight that, praise God, one can put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand to flight, three can put a hundred thousand to flight. Praise God, we've got an army, the army of God, and you got a host uh, of your angels in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're believing tonight, coming in agreement. Uh, Father, you said, uh, I didn't say it, Pastor T didn't say it, but you said we're to come agree as touching any one thing in my name, it shall be done. So praise God, if we're going to have the apostolic, we're going to have the healing uh, in the house. Uh, and the healing is going to start at the top uh, because you said how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. You said it is as the ointment uh, upon the head that ran down the beard, even Aaron's beard down to the tips of his garment and as a dew of Hermon and as a dew that descendeth upon the mountains of Zion that there God commanded the blessings uh, even life uh, evermore. Uh, praise God, even life uh, evermore uh, has got some healing with it. Uh, and I'm believing right now that her body right now there is a Holy Ghost uh, surge uh, of your anointing. I just, oh glory be to God. I just see her as a lady with the issue of blood. Oh, she had to get to Jesus. She had to touch the hem of your garments, Lord. And I'm believing that this church is symbolically lifting up Sister Geraldine tonight to touch the hem of your garments. And you're saying, Sister Geraldine, I know you're touching me. I know you're touching me. And I want you to know that the virtues of healing is flowing out of me into you tonight and I said of course she come out of and I say that the joy of the Lord is her strength and I say that that open window in heaven praise God I'm talking about the third heaven where that ladder reaches the third heaven down to this earth down to sister Geraldine hallelujah but of course she come out for you said whatever we bind on earth you bind it in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth, uh, you loose it in heaven. Uh, so we bind every force of hell and every power of darkness uh, and every affliction, every disease, uh, every bacteria, every everything uh, that would come against uh, our sister is held, praise God. And I'm believing right now that there's a Holy Ghost uh, anointing that is manifesting uh, itself right now and it's flowing from the top of her head to the soles of her feet uh, in every ounce of tissue, every ounce of fiber, every ounce of fluid, uh, every ounce of blood uh, is being cleansed by the power and the anointing of God. Uh, and I say that this is a mark day. This is a day uh, of demarcation. Uh, this is a turning point. Uh, this is where the healing virtues uh, are beginning to flow and manifest uh, in a mighty and supernatural way. And Father, I thank you for the anointing on this service tonight. I thank you for the anointing on Pastor T tonight. Praise God. It was coming from his heart. It was coming from his heart through his spirit. And your spirit was speaking. Hallelujah. I thank you that tonight, Lord, that word has gone out. And you said your word would not come back void. Uh, I'm believing tonight uh, lives are being changed uh, oh, because situations uh, are being changed. Uh, addictions uh, are changing. Uh, oh, for I sense uh, a draw. What do you see? That's it, Lord. I sense that there's a drawing uh, in the house uh, that the word uh, has reached out uh, and encompassed us tonight uh, and it's pulling us. Uh, it's drawing us uh, closer to the cross.
cross. Ubrakashika Maranama, Ibro Kulamakoya Maranaba, Aramara Kasika Maranama. I thank you, Lord, that you are the center of this house. You are the center of the leadership of this body. And Lord, I'm thanking you right now. Praise God that things are beginning to happen. Things are beginning to shake. And as heaven opened up, the floodgates of heaven, the floodgates of heaven are opening up and let it rain. 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 Hallelujah. Leave blessed tonight. Leave blessed by the power and the anointing of his word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.